Welcome back, everyone. This is the Change Log, and I'm your host, Adam Stakoviak. This is episode 129. Jared and I talked to Sarah Goldman about her awesome work at Facebook and making PHP fast, awesome, and spec. This entire conversation is about getting the PHP spec out there, Facebook leading the way, but more importantly, Sarah leading the way on that front. This show is significantly delayed. Sarah, you're awesome. I'm really sorry. Please accept my apology. This show is sponsored by DigitalOcean, CodeShip, and TopTal. We'll tell you a bit more about CodeShip and TopTal later in the show, but our friends at DigitalOcean, simple cloud hosting built for developers. In 55 seconds, you can have a cloud server with full root access, and it just doesn't get any easier than that. Pricing plans start at only 5 bucks a month for half a gig of RAM, 20 gigs of SSD drive space, one CPU, and one terabyte of transfer. They got locations all over the world, New York, San Francisco, Amsterdam, Singapore, and now their newest location, London. And you can easily migrate your data in between any of those regions, making sure that your data is always closest to your users. Use the promo code CHANGELOGNOVEMBER in all lowercase. Again, CHANGELOGNOVEMBER, all lowercase, very important, to get a $10 hosting credit when you sign up. Head to digitalocean.com right now to get started. And now, on to the show. We're joined today by Sarah Goldman. She is, man, Sarah, I'm, I'm so impressed with what you're doing. You work at Facebook, so that's kind of a big deal. But not only do you work there, but you also make Facebook fast, which uh, I think that that's been like the mantra of Facebook to be fast since the beginning. So um, today we're joined by my managing editor, Jared Santo, and also Sarah Goldman from Facebook to talk about some cool stuff happening in the PHP world, specifically the PHP spec that's brand new. So, uh, Sarah, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So, I guess the best way to start navigating this conversation might be to tee up the post that you shared on the PHP mailing list, which mm-hmm. was sort of the announcement. It was kind of at OzCon, and um, and I'm not sure if it's OzCon or OSCon. I kind of wasn't sure. I, I've never been there, so I've never heard anybody actually say it until just now. So is it OzCon or is it OSCon? You know, I always say OzCon, but that doesn't mean that I'm right. <laughs> what, do, what do you think, Jared? I'm going to go with OzCon. So I think OzCon too. Okay, so I, I wish I didn't say that at all then now because I feel like an idiot for thinking it's OSCon. <laughs> Why would it be OS? Well, now that you actually say it out loud, it does seem like it should be OSCon. It's open source right? con, so that would, yeah. that would leave it. I don't know. Got to just That's pick one. Who's, thinking. Who, who says I should write some Oz software? <laughs> yeah, right? Good point. That's this is, true. This is a heated That's debate. True. So this post was on Tuesday, July 22nd, which wasn't too long ago, but long enough ago that a lot of stuff's happened between now and then. So mm-hmm. help us, uh, and Jared, I don't want to speak for you, but I know that I'm pretty much a PHP novice. Like I've done some stuff with WordPress. I've never written anything uh, any of any extent that Sarah's been to. So I'm totally a novice in the room just asking questions. So um, I would consider but, myself an intermediate. So, An intermediate. Yeah. Okay. Not a pro, but I have some experience. So hold our hands along the way. Sarah, yes, please. please do. <laughs> please do. But tee this up. What 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 happened? What is what does this mean for the PHP community? Well, I mean, so PHP has been around for like eighteen years now, and just sort of grasp that in your mind for a second. Um, and in that eighteen years, it's gone completely as an organic growth, right? It's sort of. Rasmus wanted something to display his resume better, so he put together some scripts and to do that. And then that kind of turned into a more of a compiled program to turn some HTML with a few little bits of code and, into something real. And it's all been organic ever since then. Even when Andy and Zev got involved to uh, build PHP 3 with a more like real engine like you would find in a comp- any kind of sensible language, it was still organic because they were just trying to... S- scratch their itch. Um, and it's been a whole bunch of it scratching. And what you wind up with is what got popularly described as a fractal of bad design. <laughs> um, and, you know, a lot of us kind of take that tongue in cheek because, well, all right, it might be a fractal of bad design, but it runs most of the internet. So <clears throat> whatever. Yeah. Um, but it's done all this without really having a clear picture of itself. It doesn't know, um, how, how do you define what is proper PHP? All of the, uh, the, the really serious languages like C, C++, they have these massive documents that describe 
um, what syntax should look like, what's valid grammar, that sort of thing. And we've been talking about it. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to say we and us in a lot of different contexts today. I'm going to try and keep track of which context that is. Um, we, the PHP community, um, have been talking for a lot of years about how we kind of need to formalize what the language is. You know, we need to say, all right, these are the behaviors you should expect from the parser and, and what uh, a, a script, a well-written script actually looks like, um, as opposed to having two different ways of doing if statements that look completely different or whatever it happens to be. Um, so it's always been like, yeah, we should do that. We should do that. We should do that. But who wants to write documentation, right? None of the programmers I know want to write documentation. So fast forward years and years and years. Facebook's got this HHVM thing that we've built for uh, running, face running Facebook code very fast and hopefully other people's PHP code very fast. Um, and we're thinking, well, what can we do to give back, really? Because like Facebook was built on PHP. It was built on the public version of PHP. You know, Zuck sitting in his dorm room right. putting together the first Facebook dot net or, or whatever um was just running regular php um funnily enough probably some code that i wrote in there um <laughs> that's kind of cool yeah no he's my boss go figure um so what can we do to to give back and show that we're serious about taking the php language seriously you know we want php to be seen as a better language instead of the fractal of bad design so we said well here's something that not only has the community sort of been asking for this and hoping that they can put together a spec properly, but this will actually help HHVM at the same time because we want to be able to write a parser that is fully compliant with PHP, but how do we do that if we don't know what PHP is apart from looking at the source code? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not a completely selfless gesture either. So, let, so can we pause there for just a second? Yeah. Maybe um, for those listening kind of catching up, um, real quick mention, what is HHVM? Oh, of course. I'm sorry. Um, HHVM stands for Hip Hop Virtual Machine. Um, it's the basically third generation of a compiler that Facebook's been working on to uh, to run PHP code. It's um, ostensibly uh, PHP syntax compatible. Um, the The problem we ran into about five years ago or so at this point is that um, PHP's code base is massive, and we have a couple of users. So we need to be able to run that PHP as fast as possible. Uh, changing to another language is possible, but it is obviously a large task. We have something like 10 to the 7th lines of code. Um, that's not a small project. Right. Wow. Very, very big. Wow. Uh, yeah, very big. I remember reading <laughs> about your choice of Mercurial versus Git2, and it was you know the choice between those two version controls was also based on how large your larger code base was and how many developers exactly. you have committing to it on a daily basis, too. Yeah, no. So our, our, our main code base of PHP, um, I, I don't touch it often. I'm mostly touching C++ code, but sometimes I go to and touch the, the PHP repo. And if I'm doing the checkout on Git, because we, we're still supporting both modes at the moment, um, I can say Git pull and then I'll walk away, you know, go down, have lunch, uh, <laughs> check myself in the mirror a couple long of times, time, right? come back. Uh, a long time is the point. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do it on Mercurial, and I just say HG update and done. And now it's done. It, it, wow. it is blazingly faster. Um, we might need to earmark that, that topic just just for the listeners' sake, because I know we covered that on the change log. Um, I know it's a big deal anytime Facebook makes choices, and it sort of provides this rift for others to follow in the community because because of your sheer size, and also because of your engineering team and, and the talent you have. You know, you obviously tend to have a pretty good opinion, any pretty definitive opinion that sort of provides this divide to the community. And we covered uh, just quickly your your um, your choice of Mercurial over Git, and I thought it was just enlightening the reasons why you chose it. Yeah, and there's there's more reasons than just speed. Um, and I'm not going to go into all of those because that's actually not my area of expertise, and I'll probably get some things wrong. Um, I do just want to say that I have a lot of love for Git. I don't want to poop on Git about saying it's slower than Mercurial in all cases. It's It was a decision that Facebook made because our code base particularly needed um, uh, speed to get developer efficiency up. Um, and that's developer efficiency is one of our watchwords when it comes to what we want to focus on. Um, focus on 10 to the 7th lines of code. That is just... <laughs> 
astounding. Yeah, yeah. You, you know Very you have astounding. a lot. You know you have a large app when you consider, you know, reworking the underpinnings less work than actually a rewriting in a separate language. Well, really, I mean that, that that's what it comes down to. It's like, what's <laughs> what's going to be easier, rewriting in another language or making the language better? Right. Can you give us maybe a snapshot too of the importance of HHVM to Facebook? Because I remember reading a. Um, and help me piece this together. This is totally, a, um, you know, off the cuff here, but I remember reading a blog post about, and I can't remember the names of who's involved. So you could probably even name them if, you, if you'd like to, but it was basically like down to the wire of getting this done, or you'd have to like do something massive to get this just in time virtual machine in place to kind of read PHP code. And from what I can understand, basically decompile that down to binary or, something other way, some other way of doing it. it was like this big deal. And it was like down to the minute and a five year long project. And finally you had cracked it. What, can you kind of give a snapshot of that, of that moment? Um, that might be slightly drama- dramatized for internet okay. effect. I'm not sure. Okay. Cause I, it um, seemed dramatic to me. Uh, I, I will certainly say that, you know, when we, when we started building the hip hop project, um, which initially, by the way, was not a virtual machine or, or a just in time compiler. It was actually a, a PHP to C plus plus transpiler. Um, when we first got that project going, we actually were sort of hitting the limits of how much blood we could squeeze out of the PHP turnip for our code base and the number of users we had. Um, we literally could not buy hardware fast enough to be able to serve up every user that wanted to hit the site. Um, so in, in that sense, it was probably a bit of a crunch time. It was, it was a bit of, um, God, what are we going to do? Do we need to train everybody to write C++ code and get this thing uh, running at, at real speeds? Uh, are we going to pick up, I don't know, compiled Python or something like that? I don't know. Um, it, consider the undertaking when you have that many engineers working on that much code. Um, how long is that going to take? Um, turned out the uh, the process of transpiling PHP to, P- to C++ code at the very base of it wasn't all that difficult. Um, I don't want to take it away from him, from uh, Haiping, who wrote the first version of, of hip hop, but um, the the basic of, of just doing that bits of transpiling uh, got us a huge performance win. I think it was like an 80% win right off the bat, and it came to like a two and a half times win within a, like a year or something like that. Um, that's a huge game when you can run uh, two and a half times fewer sewers, right? Absolutely. Um, and that just gives you that breathing room to say, oh, thank God, oh, you know. Um, that ultimately uh, led to the VM project because we looked at this transpiler option and we said, well, this has got a bunch of problems with it. Number one, our developer environment now looks nothing like our production pro- environment. And it can't because you can you imagine as a developer, if you make one tiny change to a little PHP file, you then have to recompile all of these millions of lines of code just to see what difference comes out on your web page, you would run screaming from that. Yes. <laughs> what, what was the compile time? Do you recall? Like, of a um, change. so, uh, I, I, yeah, I can say that number. Sorry. I was trying to decide if I could say that number. Um, at the time that we switched off of the transpiler onto the VM, um, I want to say it took about 20 minutes to build the entire site, but that's not on a single machine. That's actually on a fleet of machines because we're using disk CC to do this. Wow. Um, I think if you tried to do this on a single machine, um, it would be like, you know, a day's process or something like that. It was definitely not something that developers could do. So developers uh, for a while wound up doing just regular PHP because it's close enough. But then we started adding functionality to the language. Like generators, for example, we've had for years and PHP just got them uh, in uh, version 5.5. So uh, we had these sort of hacks in place of like HPHPI, which was uh, slower than regular PHP, but it worked for development purposes and, and things like that. And it was, it was just kind of messy. It, re- it led to some weird inconsistencies between dev, dev and production. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so that led off the, the VM project. Um, and we, we had a bunch of guys who, who came from Microsoft, uh, at that time, uh, they've worked on the CLR. Um, so they've built, you know, just in time compilers before recently, in fact. Um, so they brought a lot of that, uh, information to bear and that, um, 
I, th- I think that kicked off somewhere around like 09, something like that, slightly before we actually released hip hop to the world in 2010. Um, but it didn't really hit the point of running production code until uh, January of 2013. So it, it took a while to get that one right. If I can maybe do a callback to our last show too, Jared, um, I, I want to make a note, I guess, to kind of, I guess, go from where we are to talking about the PHP spec and what it's actually written in. It's kind of a an aside, but a throwback to our most recent show, which was uh, just released today, episode 127, talking about uh, keeping a change log or the project keep a change log from Olivier Lacan, uh, which I could not say correctly on the show, but... Uh, yeah, you know, it's just whatever. That's I I can't get over it. Anyways, um, what you say though, Sarah, is that the first thing you'll notice is that it's written in Markdown, um, mm-hmm. and that there's this slight lean towards um, something called restructured text, and it's something mm-hmm. that I haven't inter- interfaced with. Can you kind of talk a bit about you know your choice of what to write the spec in? Well, the original spec was actually written in MS Word. Um, we the the contractor that we hired to work on the spec, um, he's got like a lot of spec chops. Um, he's worked on the C spec before. Um, his name is Rex and I'm going to butcher his last name. Jash, J A S C H E, something like that. That's how I'd say See, it, I yeah. can't pronounce last names either. Um, he's worked on, on specs before, but his tool of choice is, is MS word. So God bless him. Let him do what he needs to do. Um, <laughs> we're not going to put that into any kind of open source, uh, collaborative, uh, editing system. Cause that just doesn't work for that. Um, so we had to pick something. Um, we look at GitHub. We say, oh, okay, Markdown is natively supported like by GitHub. It seems like it's probably expressive enough for what we need to do. So let's just use that as a starting point, and we can switch it off after that. Um, when I made the original announcement at OSCON and released that sort of PDF of the sample chapter, uh, I asked for people's opinions, you know, what makes sense to you guys? You know, what formats do we want to be uh, editing it in? Um, and in those responses from the PHP mailing list, not from internally at Facebook, um, there, there were, of course, some bike shedding about, oh, maybe we should go this direction. Well, this one has this advantage. That one has that advantage. Maybe ASCII docs the right way to go. Um, as, to, as is pretty typical with, with those kind of forums, you know, there were a lot of answers. Slight lean towards restructured text from what I could see, but nothing really definitive. Um, at the end of the day, um, the guy who was actually doing the transformation from uh, Word doc to something sensible, Joel Marcy, who I was hoping was going to be on this podcast, yeah. but he didn't make it. Bummer, Joel. You um, couldn't make it, man. I miss yeah. you. Where are you, Joel? <laughs> um, at, at, at the end of the day, he had already started migra- uh, migrating things into Word doc, and they were looking great. So I just said, you know what? Finish the Word doc, and we will fix that later. There's always time for pull requests. Um, and sure enough, um, one of the first big uh, commits that was done by somebody outside of Facebook was to take this big monolithic markdown file and split it up into chapters, which was something I was initially asking Joel for. And he's like, I got so much going on. I can't even think about that much. <laughs> so it, it, it's great to see the PHP community have been so well receptive of this. Like, like I was, I was worried that there was going to be some sort of like, Oh, Facebook's trying to take over the language by imposing the spec on us. Right. But it's, it's really just been sort of like, Oh gosh, thanks guys. We we were looking for this. Where'd you find it? <laughs> um So how long has this really project great. been in the making? Is it I mean, I know twenty years, the language, the kind of the story we've kind of painted here, but you know, how long has it has it been on your particular mind to sort of start lifting this up and, and actually making it happen, even from your perspective or Facebook's? Um, I wanna say that we made the decision that we were going to write a spec and publish one somewhere around last February. Um, I think we actually started like properly working on it, you know, sorting out Rex's contract, things like that. Um, I want to say we probably started working on it around March or possibly April. I can't say for sure. Um, so just this year, not very long. So it seems like specs are far more important when you have many implementations. You know, you look at something like JavaScript, Mm -hmm. you know, you have all these browser implementers, um, and they all need a spec to conform to. Was it is HHVM the second major PHP implementation, um, or are there is there a more diverse ecosystem that I'm not aware of? Um, it depends on what you mean by major. Um, I consider it the second major implementation, um, but a lot of people who have worked on other implementations would certainly disagree with me. Okay. 
Um, there's uh, implementations like Phalanger, uh, PHC, um, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Hippie VM, uh, which was released very recently and uh, has spent a lot of time comparing themselves to us. So I'm not going to say they, they picked their name as, as a as a bit of a gesture, but mm-hmm. maybe. Um, so there's, there's a number of PHP implementations out there. I okay. haven't seen a lot of chatter about many of them. Oh, Roadsend. I forgot to mention them. They're another implementation, but I'm pretty sure they're gone. Um, so having a, having a spec is definitely important to bringing all of these different implementations together. Um, but I think, I think that's not the only benefit that we get out of it. Because um, if you look actually at PHP itself, um, it goes through these, you know, version cycles. Four to five was a big jump. Um, five to seven now is going to be a big jump. By the way, we're skipping six. Um, Why? Th- uh, there's history behind six. Um, you, <laughs> oh, I don't Pearl think you want me Pearl to get six? in there. I mean, is that the... Very much like <laughs> Pearl Six, yes. This is like, in, um, you know, certain hotels, they, they don't have a 13th floor. You know, you go from the 12th <laughs> straight to the 14th. But come on, those people on the 14th know what floor they're really on. That's right. Oh, that's a, you, that's you a, laugh, that's but a Mitch Hedberg joke. But. You laugh, but in the discussion about what version to call it, 7 was actually highlighted as a lucky number. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, humans and our numbers. Um, uh, no, we were going to bake Unicode into the language for PHP 6 um, like four years ago or something like that. And the project got really far along to the point that even books were published about it. Um, those of us who worked on the Unicode implementation felt sort of a, you know, a connection to that. Um, and then the project kind of died because of a number of reasons. And so there was never a six. Um, so a discussion came up about whether they'd pick six or seven. I don't want to belabor it. Bottom line, we picked seven. Um, gosh, what was I talking about before we went off on a tangent? The spec and the next version, kind of. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, so the Skipping usefulness six. of the spec. Yes, uh, the usefulness of the spec is um, partially to give the PHP project something to make sure that you know we don't break things accidentally along the way, and we have broken things accidentally on a number of occasions. Um, remind me to explain to you why zero x zero plus two equals four sometimes. Um, it's also important for some of the uh, revisions we're making to the language right now. Um, there are two uh, RFCs up on the PHP list, one for uni- some, what's called uniform variable syntax. Um, this is to make it sort of consistent when you say something like uh, $A square brackets, some subscript, uh, parentheses, some function call, arrow, some method call, whatever you happen to do, piling these things together. What's the right evaluation order? Left to right, right to left? Um, middle outwards, which is actually um, sort of like what it currently does and makes no sense, um, unifying that and making it make sense. Um, another guy, Nikita Popov, um, who's been really a um, uh, uh, big contributor in the PHP circles in the past few years, um, he's working on an abstract, abstract syntax tree for PHP, which is also another huge thing. Mm-hmm. Um, PHP's compiler doesn't have an AST. It says, here here are my parse uh uh, expressions coming through. Let's just compile those straight to bytecode and don't look at the overall program at all. Hmm. Um, so he's introducing an AST, which is obviously a big opportunity to screw up the language. Um, having, again, a conformance suite and a spec helps make sure that that doesn't happen. All right, let's pause the show for just a minute, give a shout out to our sponsor, CodeShip. CodeShip is a hosted continuous deployment service that just works. We've been working with CodeShip for quite a while now. We really, really enjoy not only the product they've built, but the people behind it. You can easily set up continuous integration for your app today in just a few steps. And CodeShip has great support for lots of languages, all the test frameworks, as well as notification services. They easily integrate with everything you can think of, GitHub, Bitbucket. You can deploy to cloud services like Heroku, AWS, Nojitsu, Google App Engine, or even your own servers, because that's the way you want to do it sometimes, too. Uh, setup only takes three minutes. It's it's so quick. It really is just so quick. Get started today with their free plan and make sure you use the code, the changelog podcast. That's really important. Use the changelog podcast. And when you do that, you're going to get 20% off for three months on any plan you choose. Head to codeship.io and tell them the changelog sent you. Well, let's let's talk about this, you know, this 
uh, backlash that didn't happen, you know, the, what you maybe perhaps feared is that the community would say, okay, this is Facebook trying to, you know, grab a stranglehold around PHP, the language by introducing the spec. Can you, mm-hmm. and I don't necessarily believe that, but could you still speak to those fears perhaps um, maybe from Facebook's perspective? And then maybe, you know, you, you, like you say, we have all these different we's, you know, you represent Facebook a little bit and then you also represent just the PHP community and how you balance mm-hmm. those two as well would be interesting. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, start, I'll speak to the second part of that first okay. because I've actually been working on PHP for about the past dozen years or so. Um, so I've got a lot of uh, skin in the game in terms of code contributed to uh, the PHP source code and, and involvement with the community. I've, I, I wrote pretty much the book on writing extensions for PHP. Um, but at the same time, I'm also working here for, for, eight, for Facebook on HHVM largely because of that PHP work. Um, I wrote... I'm, I'm doing things like writing the actual extension API itself on the HHVM side. Hmm. So I have interests on both sides of the fence. Right. And um, when I come to the list, you know, it's, it, it's on the one hand, it's coming with the uh, history of, of like having time and skin in the game with PHP, but it's also coming in with this. Yeah, but she's working on that other PHP thing. And um, how, how much of what she's requesting in this RFC or whatever is to improve HHVM so it can take over the world. Um, I, I don't think I have to tell you that there there is um, there is some degree of sort of distrust about Facebook and Facebook's intentions. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, do any Google search and you'll get plenty of those conspiracy theories. Um, and some of those come through because we're all people and we, you know, we, we want to protect what we see as good. And, you know, PHP's open source uh, philosophy I think is actually really good. It's a really open project. It's got no BDFL. It's got nobody saying, no, this is how the project must go forward. And that's why there's been no forks because what goes into the language is what the people who are actively working on it at the time say is right for the language. Mm. Um, So when you've got something like um, Facebook suddenly making this big push on its open source uh, on its uh, implementation of PHP saying, oh, we're, we're making this really open source now. We're making this really uh, friendly to, to developers out there. Um, and uh, hey, here's a spec for it. You can look at that as, uh, gosh, PHP is seeing a resurgence. Or you can look at it as, hmm, embrace, extend, and extinguish. Right. Um, so it, so I, I have personally gotten some of that, that kickback on other... Um, uh, posts that I've put on the the mailing list, but that did not happen at all here. I think everybody sort of saw the way we released this, um, and the way that we you know tried to make sure that we focused on PHP as the source of truth and said, "How can I fault this? You know, it's it's this is just a thing that now belongs to the PHP community, like." Um, we, with Facebook hat on, didn't maintain any control over this. We said, here it is, public domain license, CC0. We're putting it into PHP's Git repository so they completely control the documents. Um, it's it's completely out of Facebook's hands at this point. Hmm. And maybe that's where we can dig in just a quick bit, because I know we talk about licensing on the show here and there, but maybe to catch up why you chose CC0, it's... It's in quotes, no rights reserved. Can you talk about maybe the choice of that license versus, say, GPL or some other license you may have chose for other uh, open source that Facebook has out there? Um, well, I can only speak to it so much because I didn't specifically right. pick the CC0 license. Um, my personal favorite um, for my projects is BSD license because I just like the little bits of attribution. Um, but like, it, it comes down to to what your your philosophy about this sort of information is. Like we're just talking about a document at the end of the day. We're not even talking about software. Right. Um, you know what is going to be most useful to a project like PHP? And like I said, PHP is a really open project. And for something like PHP, it makes sense to just say, you know what? Here's some information for the world. Um, what it, what do we have to gain by putting a more restrictive license on it? Very little. Um, you mentioned GPL. Um, I could I could see the advantage of wanting to say that if somebody else grabs this and you know adds to it and and extends it, you know we would want to make sure that that's open and visible to everyone. Um, I personally don't like the GPL license. Um, 
Well, I'm not holding yeah. you to the fence here trying to figure out why you chose a slice. I just wanted to kind of get a snapshot because mostly from the, the vantage point of uh, ill will, right? When somebody does yeah. something in the world, you, you, you want to, um, you know, depending upon the person, obviously, you want to say that person has goodwill for me. So, or that entity or that organization or, you know, so your reputation does precede you in a way that you've done a lot mm-hmm. for open source. And I just want to make sure that you have a chance here clearly to, to say, we chose this license for this reason, for the reasons it's open, it's, you know, it's not ours, it's the communities and that kind of thing. So I, I didn't want to uh, think that too far, but get the point across. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I could say about that is just like, that's the beautiful thing about CC0. It's yeah. literally no strings attached. You know, yeah, it, and it's a it's a simple license. It's about three lines. You, you don't need uh, you don't need a law degree to understand a license like that. So maybe this is just a a left wing question, but it seems kind of an ob- obvious one to to me. Okay. But you know, it's just a document. You just said that um, <laughs> it's not like it's code. It's not like it's changing PHP really. But what does this spec? What does having it written out? Um, fleshed out, open source, uh, CCO, uh, CC zero license a- attached to it. What does that do? What, how does this? How do you expect or desire for the community to change because of this document now being there to specify how PHP should be? It's interesting you were, use the phrase "it's not changing the language" because, as it turns out, it actually is. Okay. Um, one of the first payoffs that we've seen from this is um, as. You know, people are looking through the document, uh, a lot of pull requests coming through for simple things like grammar fixes and things like that, whatever. Um, a few bugs have come up. Uh, one of them that I just worked on the other day uh, noted that the spec says switch statements may only have one default block, which I, mean, I think we can all agree makes sense. Um, and this user had, had noticed at some point in his code that he wrote a switch statement with two default blocks. And it caused a weird bug for him because he couldn't understand why that first default block wasn't getting executed. Um, and so he filed a bug report and he said, this doesn't match. PHP allows multiple default statements. Mm. And when you have multiple, it'll execute the last one, which I think we can all agree is a bit clowny. Uh, so what should we do with that? Should we fix the spec to say it, multiple are allowed because that's what PHP does? Well, no, we shouldn't actually because that's really silly code. Um, and I put it exactly that way to the list. I said, this is this is silly behavior that PHP supports b- probably by accident. Let's fix the language so it matches the spec. So that's what we're doing. And, and that's the benefit of having that spec. You've got a lot of eyes looking at it, this, and you've got that lived experience of these developers out in the wild who are saying, that doesn't jibe with what I know. <laughs> So Facebook has another uh, language that uh, they're very interested in, their very own hack language, which I Mm -hmm. I think they announced, was it this year? I think it was 2014. It was a few months Um, back. Yeah, I think it was in April. Yeah, Yeah. April-ish. We know HHBM compiles to hack and PHP. Um, Mm -hmm. How does hack fit into this landscape with Facebook? Obviously, it's not going to affect the PHP spec, or will it? Um, So hack, um, we we are writing a second spec, actually. Um, Rex is... Already busy back at work writing a spec for the hack. A second language. word document open, huh? A second word document, yes. Command new, um, or was that control new? Never mind. Uh, w- when that's done, um, we're most likely going to publish that as well. Of course, that will be under the the Facebook namespace on on GitHub or uh, possibly the HHVM namespace. I'm not sure um, because it does make sense for us to own that document at least for now. Um, hack is sort of it's you could describe it as its own language. But I think if you know any PHP, you can look at a hack document and immediately understand what it does mm-hmm. because it's it's really more like PHP++, um, which for those of you keeping track of PHP's rules, uh, if you have a string that you post uh, increment, it tur- that would turn out PHQ. Try and pronounce that in your head. I'll leave that to you. <laughs> um, so hack is, uh, as I said, PHP++. Uh, it's a different open tag. It drops a whole bunch of some of the clownier bits of PHP, the things that we look at and we say, why is that even in the language? Um, and it can do so safely because obviously if you're writing hack code, this is not something that was written in 1989 and still needs to function right. Sorry, I meant 1999. 89 is a bit too far back. Um, it also adds a number of things that um, we notice sort of developing our own code base 
it would have been really nice to have, and we're not really sure why PHP didn't add them. Mm-hmm. Um, I know why, but that's another story. Um, things like uh, scalar type hinting. Um, PHP only allows type hinting for arrays and objects, so we add type hinting for everything. We even go beyond that, parameterized type hinting. Um, the sort of workhorse of PHP, the array that can be a vector or a map or a set or whatever, mm-hmm. um, we actually define these specifically as a vector, a map, a set, a pair, whatever else. Um, so you can define more uh, specialized structures that can behave more sensibly under the hood. If I've got a vector of int, that should literally be in memory, int, 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 in, in a nice tight packed array. Um, so there's there's a performance gain to be had there, but there's also a readability gain to be had. You don't have to look at you know dollar foo as an array and wonder what kind of array that mm-hmm. is. You can look at dollar foo as a vector of int and know exactly what you're dealing with. Um, that helps the static analysis type checker, and it also helps you as a human understand what the code's doing. Um, so I mentioned static analysis type checker. That's sort of the workhorse of hack. Um, this is a extra program that runs in the background on a developer workstation. And it reads all of your code base constantly, watches for updates on the file system. And it looks at all of the code paths for data moving through your system. So it says, okay, this is coming from dollar underscore request. Obviously, it's a string because that's what comes from the user. Mm-hmm. It's going into this function. So this function apparently accepts strings. Does it accept other types elsewhere? No? Okay, we'll say this type, this function accepts strings. It's going from there into some function elsewhere, and it goes down to other paths. It gets concatenated, whatever else. If you've got any sort of type error in that system, it's going to let you know that, hey, you should probably check this bit of code over here. We've converted 98 or something percent like that of our code base, of our you know 10 to the 7th lines of code, to using hack wow. by running a program that automatically goes through and makes all those changes. So now when somebody works on Facebook code, they see this code that's fully type annotated, has all these parameterized expressions to uh, let them know what's moving through. And uh, we have a lot fewer problems of people saying, oh, I want to refactor my little helper class that surely nobody else is using. And then finding out that the site breaks because somebody was passing the wrong kind of data and it happened to work before. So, you know, there's an old saying, a servant, you know, can't serve two masters. It seems like <laughs> PHP's it generated themselves a nice, or PHP. Facebook has this new, uh, maybe not a master, but maybe a new toy. And you said that 98% mm-hmm. of your code base is now over onto it, um, being mm-hmm. a subset or a uh, maybe a superset of PHP. Is, is it a superset? Is that fair to say? It, well, it's it's both a sub and a superset. Yeah, it's got it's a, like a, a side a set. Side set. I got gotcha. you. It's, it's it's in a Venn diagram or something. Right, like right. So just your personal opinion, where do you see you know Facebook's interest lie long term? But at the same time, your Facebook is investing into an open source public domain PHP spec. So it seems like mm-hmm. they have interest in both things. Where do you see that moving into the future? Um, so there's a, there's a few pieces of that answer. So um, as you see, you can't serve two masters, and that's a very fair uh, statement on it. How much attention are we really paying to the regular PHP side of things? Yeah. Well, a language is more than just its syntax, right? It's also the whole runtime that comes behind it. And PHP has a massive runtime library. Um, those are completely shared in common. So, you know, we're obviously taking good care of those uh, in common. The other half of that is um, a lot of the extra features that go into Hack are actually just development time features. Um, they're not necessarily used in the runtime. Hmm. Um, some pieces of them are, but not all of them. So what works for hack works equally well for PHP. Um, we want to make sure that we still pass the conformance suite and we're still behaving the way PHP expects. But we can we can work on hack without losing sight of PHP. Um, modulo those those sort of missing things. Gotcha. Um, you know, we... We kind of rely on external users to tell us when we're doing PHP wrong at this point because we are all hack. Um, but we do have you know tens of thousands of tests that run on every single diff. So hopefully we're finding most of those things ourselves. Um, and what was the other half of your question? I've already paged out. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, forget well, about it. it. <laughs> oh, I think it's. I think the the kind of maybe the. the the leave behind on that one might be just that you've got kind of these two parallels you're running and to some, it seems like maybe it's a competitor and to some, um, they can clearly see what you just described there, which was this sort of parallel effort and it's sort of like sugar on top. 
instead of like yeah. a competitor and the squashing. Well, I mean, hack is not meant to be a completely new language. It's meant it's meant to be um, something that can live alongside PHP. Mm-hmm. And in fact, in most cases, it kind of has to. Uh, one of the things hack doesn't let you do is have any top level code. Well, your entry point can't actually launch without top level code. So there has to be a PHP file in there somewhere. Mm. Um, and it, it, it's it's about giving the developer the opportunity to use as much or as little of that functionality as they want to. And one other thing I think that's kind of neat about hack is just, I think the, the hacker hack culture that Facebook has propped up and just how, how, um, I guess how awesome it is, I guess, in a sense to say that you, you get not only to do some really awesome stuff, um, for developers across the world worldwide, um, but you also get to come up with a language that's kind of named after your mantra, which it, to me is just like completes the world, you know? Yeah. At the end of the day, that's, that's pretty much, um, so, so the, la- the name of the language, that's another story. Um, it's a, it's in a lot of our opinions, like, and even internally, it's a horrible name for a language. Cause how do you Google that? Right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was, I was thinking, that's... well, that's great. Now the NSA is watching me because I've talked about hacking something. <laughs> um, they're already watching. So, that, well, they're watching us, certainly. Um, oh, God, somebody's going to read something into that. No, I did not mean anything by <laughs> Tell that. Tell us more. I already started. <laughs> just kidding. I just tweeted, I, I I just tweeted it, like, that out. Anytime you, and I think this natural addition of Lang after whatever it is, so Foo Lang, Hack Lang, mm-hmm. PHP Lang, that makes sense. You've got SAS Lang, you know, all these other different Ruby Langs, so the the addition of Lang kind of helps maybe keep the NSA at bay. <laughs> well, I mean, it certainly is the same same problem that Go ran into. How generic is the word Go, right? Right. right. Yeah, it's a um, movie. It's a drug. It's a verb. <laughs> it's a game. Whoa, there's a drug called Go. Yeah, I think I don't know. What, uh, I'm not, it's only I'm not Omaha, these, on the kids these days. <sighs> uh, if you people are going to read into that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <they will. laughs> we're definitely catching Echelon's attention at this point. Uh, well, Sarah, you know uh, the the one other thing I wanted to mention, and you kind of did it a little tiny bit, and I think I have to give you a little bit of applause because you seem to be pretty humble about um, m- maybe either the fact that we didn't allow you to give you yourself a proper intro in the front of the show, but um, I think it's awesome that you've written this really awesome book, extending and, and, and embedding PHP. Uh, you've been involved in the PHP community for a very long time, so you you definitely have uh, the battle scars to to prove you are where you are for a reason. And obviously, Facebook saw something in you because they hired you to work on making it fast, which is pretty much what everybody wants Facebook to be, right? Uh, it's what everybody wants all their sites to be. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's a true statement, just as well. Um, I think uh, you you mentioned a couple of tangential conversations we could probably have. I'm not sure if you want to bring them out or maybe take a minute or two just to touch on a couple of them. You're welcome to, but um, sure. yeah, I think you mentioned uniform variable syntax and a couple others. So feel free to riff for, for a minute or so. Um, I'm not sure how much more I can say about uniform variable syntax uh, as an example, because I mean, that that's just sort of, um, it, it was an RFC put forward as a, guys, we're doing this kind of clowny. How can we fix this without breaking all the code out there? Um, which is really what the, all, the the consternation on that particular subject has come down to. You know, um, people are expecting their expressions to work a certain way because they've always worked a certain way. They maybe even be muttering about it and saying, "Why do I have to put extra parentheses or why do I have to do weird things for this language that doesn't understand order of precedence?" Um, at the same time, that code exists. And if we just like introduce that in like 5.7 or something like that, there would be uproar because stuff would break. Um, not my stuff. I put ridiculous numbers of parentheses and braces everywhere. Um, <laughs> I've, I've been told off for using too many parentheses, in fact. Um, but, you know, we there are there are warts on the language and everyone on the PHP internal list knows what those warts are because we get you know pelted with them on a regular basis. PHP is a fractal of bad design. It's a double claw hammer. It's a silly language, whatever it happens to be. It tends to get a bad rap, honestly. I mean, especially as, uh, I, I dare to say even like this, but more modern ways or more modern things, just meaning that they're newer. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of things happening in the JavaScript space with Node, just with all sorts of other areas. Ruby is around 10 years. I think it's just just turned 10 or just turned 15 or so now. What, 
Rails oh, just turned ten. Growing up, yeah, Rails just turned ten. That's what it was. Um, you know, so like people kind of cling to these new things, but there's been PHP for quite a while, and it and it tends to kind of get this bad rap because it's been around for so long, yeah. And people almost look down upon it in some ways, and that, that's why I really thought it would be important to have you on the show just to talk about the spec, its importance, and what you've been doing for the language and the community itself, and then also kind of how that ties into Facebook's approach to to making itself fast, HHVM, and everything else we've talked about. So. Uh, kind of neat. There's a couple others. Do you want to mention abstract syntax tree or, or the other two that you've mentioned that were uh, side so, conversations? Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I sort of touched on both of them yeah. already, but um, yeah, the abstract, abstract syntax tree is something like I said, Nikita's working on. Um, this like this never this used to never matter to me when I was working on uh, regular PHP's engine. Um, because I'd look at the compiler and I'd say, well, you know, it gets the job done. It probably makes it faster not to have this intermediate representation. It's fine. We can just compile an expression. Here's a ternary statement. Okay, make, emit the opcodes for a ternary statement. Why do you need an extra abstract representation? Yeah. And then I started working on HHVM. And I saw people who really understood how to write compilers. And I saw the, the way this abstract syntax tree got used in the process of compilation. I'm like... Oh, that's why. That makes a lot of sense. We can do a lot more optimization. We can do a, we can do a lot fewer hacks to make these expressions work. We can make things just function right without being inscrutable. And I look back at the 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 Zen engine and I say, you know, there are some parts in here that are kind of kind of messed up. Um, and and the AST is going to help us fix that. It's not going to be anything visible to end users. Nobody's going to know what's gone in. Uh, but it's going to make uh, our life as as PHP in- engine developers a lot simpler. All right, let's pause the show for a minute. Give a shout out to a sponsor. We've been working with TopTal for a very long time. These guys are super awesome. And I kind of wanted to take a moment and pause just for a bit. And rather than just kind of give you an ad about what they're doing and what they're about, I kind of wanted to tell you a, a personal story. And part of that personal story is telling you a little bit about my day job. So beyond just the change log and what we do here, I have a full-time job at a nonprofit called Pure Charity. And uh, we have a rail stack. And earlier this year, we had some uh, developers leave the company and we had a big push coming for the summertime for for a, a, uh, a new f- feature we were working on. And uh, it hit me that that we should call upon our awesome friends at TopTal. Um, and just to kind of give you a snapshot, TopTal is a matchmaking service for really awesome developer opportunities and developers to get started. So we had a need for some really great Ruby and Rails developers. And TopTal helped us find developers that fit not only our budget, but also our culture our coding style, all sorts of things. And long story short, they basically perform magic because these people we work with, I'm going to give a shout out to them real quick if you don't mind, Guilherme, uh, Andre, and Rafael, all listeners of the Change Law too, by the way. These guys are phenomenal. Good people, good coders, and just great, all around great. And I have to say thanks to Top Top because they made this possible and if you've been thinking about freelancing, if you're thinking about uh, trying out a new technology or you want some flexibility in your work-life balance and doing some travel, TopTal is a great place to be an elite engineer. Go to toptal.com slash developer to get started and tell them that ChangeLog sent you. And um, totally, I think it might be completely in left wing here, but you also wrote lib SSH2. Do you want to touch on that real quick before we start to tell off the call? Um, yeah, I mean, that's really not, nothing particularly PHP related, except in that um, at the time I was working on a lot of streams work in PHP. Um, streams are sort of this abstraction layer we have underneath all the F open, F read, F write, those sort of calls. Um, so that you can work with different sorts of resources. So you can do something like f open an HTTP URL, and that'll talk HTTP to the remote server, and you can f read off of that re- remote network resource, and it's great. Um, I thought, gosh, how cool would that be if I could do that with like SCP, uh, S- SFTP? No, F. Yeah, SFTP mm-hmm. files. Mm-hmm. Sorry, it's been a while since I even touched this. <laughs> yeah. um, SFTP files or 
uh, SCP resources, or just even be able to SSH into a system and send a command to it. You know, how cool would that be? Um, well, I looked at uh, OpenSSL and said, can I actually, you know, pull a library out of this? Oh, God. Oh, God, no. Oh, God, look away. Um, <laughs> S- OpenSSL is a lovely uh, piece of software, um, but it's it's also got a very interesting code base. Um, so I, I ended up just going to uh, IETF and I said, where's the RFCs for Secure Shell? Oh, here they are. Let's start implementing a transport. Let's start implementing a few channels. Let's start implementing this. Um, next thing I know, I've got this entire, you know, client side library for connecting to SSH servers um, so that I can shove it into PHP and then promptly not use it because while it's cool, it's actually not that, um, you know, practically useful for anything that I'm working on. <laughs> um, it was just sort of, I, I was working for the university at the time. And the thing about working for uh, public institutions is that you have, um, very relaxed goals and extra time on your hands, um, which is actually how I am getting involved in PHP in the first place. It sure seems like uh, you enjoy diving in deep and getting into the nitty gritty. Is that fair to say? Well, I like understanding what I'm working with. Um, you know, I, I, I will search Google for how to's and documentations with the best of them. But if I'm really going to do something with something, I really want to understand how it works underneath. Mm. Um, on the HHVM project right now, my main job is to make PHP a good open source project, which really means I don't have to look at much of the code at all. Theoretically, um, I can work on the build system, some of the runtime library APIs, things like that, but I don't need to get down into the JIT and start issuing machine code instructions uh, to do what I need to do for my job. But gosh, I'd actually like to understand how that stuff actually operates, wouldn't I? Mm-hmm. So, um, so I have, so I've, I've got uh, commits down in there and I now f- for no further use in my life, probably uh, have the ABIs for uh, Intel X8, X64 architectures and ARM V8. Uh, I know that the first six integer arguments of a function call go to RDI, RSI, RDX, RCX, <laughs> R8, and R9. The first eight SIMD registers go into XMM0 through XMM7, and then everything else goes on the stack. Um, will I use that again? Probably not. Uh, but it was fun to write the code that actually used it, and it shortened our uh, the compile time of one of our files from 100 seconds down to 10. So wow. that was good. That was good. That was um, good. That was really good. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, we were using these recursive variadic templates, which, you know, God bless C11. It's a it's a beautiful extension to the C language, but oh, it hurt my head to read that thing. <laughs> like reading assembly was easier than reading this. So that's saying a lot. Well, after yeah. after listening to you talk for a while, I'm sure uh, you know, there might be people out there to whom you're becoming their programming hero because you seem to have a lot of skills oh, and a lot not. of knowledge. I want to turn that on you and ask, uh, as we wrap up here, uh, wh- who's a programmer that you look up to and that you would consider your programming hero? Oh, well, I'm glad you said look up to because the, the word hero is a really heavily loaded term for me. Okay. Um, and I, I, I'm not going to say I have a programming heroes. I definitely have people that I admire. Um, a couple of people on my team that I just want to give shout outs to, um, uh, Mark Williams. Um, he's been on the project for a very long time. He understands everything about, um, repo authoritative mode in our system and uh, a bunch of the um, the, the weirdly ar- ar- arcane bits of our system. Mm. When somebody has a question, they go to Mark because Mark knows it top to bottom. He's a really good compiler designer. Um, and he's actually really friendly in his responses. He's very generous with his information. Um, similarly, Jordan DeLong, I want to call out uh, because this man knows the C++ spec by heart. Um, he probably listens to it on tape every night. <laughs> Um, and, and he, like, when, when I, when I come to him and I say, you know, I'm trying to solve this particular problem and, um, I, I need to achieve these two things, but I just don't see how they fit together. He'll just be like, oh, well here. And he'll scribble something on a piece of paper and he'll hand it to me and say, try something like that. I mean, he'll explain it as well. It's not as though he's just, Mm -hmm. you know, throwing a piece of paper at me, but like, he'll actually sketch out an implementation while we're sitting there and, 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 and say, you could try something like this. This will probably do what you want. You may have to, you know, check the other thing over there. Um, he's, he smiles a lot. He's a really friendly guy. Um, so I definitely want to call those guys out. Um, 
heroes. Gosh, you know, honestly, anyone who who looks at a piece of open source software that they use, that they make their living on, that they that they uh, that they care about at all, and says, "I want to make this better. I want to give back. I want to do something that's not going to profit me immediately at all." Those are my heroes, man. Mm-hmm. Like just open source developers in general. Like I love that there is this community out there, and I. I, I, I had a conversation on the last night of OSCON with with the, a guy I've known for a long time, John Kagashal. Um, he's he's very concerned that some of our culture is getting lost. Um, and some of some of our uh, like collectively our uh, commitment to to open source and and uh, real open source is is getting sort of sucked up by the corporate machine. Mm. Um, he actually made a bet with me that night. We were standing out in an intersection in Portland at like two o'clock in the morning, shouting at each other. Um, he made a bet with me. He said, I'll bet you 20 bucks. Facebook never actually lets go of the spec and never actually makes it, you know, a pro- properly community open source thing. And he emailed me after the, uh, the spec actually got released on PHP's Git server. He says, all right, I'll owe you 20 bucks. <laughs> that was fast. So. That's a conversation I think we've, uh, we've kind of had here and there on the show too. Just this, um, this sort of, sort of descent towards corporations and their takeover of open source and what true open source is. We've had, um, to kind of call yeah, you that, call it corporate source. Right. Yeah. Uh, we had Chad Whitaker on who's, uh, runs get up and he's obviously pretty, uh, prolific in that he's open company kind of person. We had some deep conversations both on the show and then after the show as well with him on that. So we've kind of danced around that quite a bit. I think that's just a natural fear when it comes to like profit and, and uh, and source code, you know, they mm-hmm. they just and then you got things like bounty source and people wanting, to, and there's there's legitimate reasons for people wanting to raise money to build something. Um, I'm thinking like Tim Caswell. I don't know if you listened to that show or not, but he did some pretty cool stuff, and um, he, he's just really interested in building infrastructure code, not really building products on it, and uh, he's trying to find ways to do that full time and make it completely open source. And I think that's just naturally. It's something we want to support, but it's it's neat to yeah. see the the contrast of like corporates taking over and uh, what you call real open source. I'm curious to know what he meant by that. Mm. But uh, one last question we have is uh, is it called arms? It's a, a called arms to like uh, the PHP spec, you know, whatever you can think of really that that you're um, you know spending your days on. How can the community wrap themselves around whatever? Um, you think is most important what's some good guidance to the php community as it as it is to what you're working on well i mean so, uh, the first piece of guidance i would give no, no matter what project we're talking about whether it's php or anything else you know don't feel afraid to get involved in, in an open source project just because you don't think your coding skills are up to par or because you think that um you know somebody's not going to like your ideas you might get yelled at a couple of times because people are kind of jerks, but <laughs> sometimes not, yes. all, not everyone's a jerk and not everyone's a, not, most people aren't jerks all the time. Um, and you can also pick something that you feel comfortable with. If that means documentation, God, you will get loved for writing documentation. You want to build, you want to keep people from yelling at you, write documentation and they will love you for life. Mm-hmm. Um, something like the spec, you know, we, we, we knew there were grammatical and spelling mistakes in the spec when we released it. And we're like, you know, what? we're okay with that because that's a nice low hanging fruit that somebody can come along and just say, Hey, here's a pull request. And the next thing you know, you've got somebody who's involved in the project who has this feeling of stakeholdership over it. Even if it's just, I got them to use the right spelling of the word too. you know, that <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> that's something. Yeah. I mean, and it, the next thing that person's going to do is they're going to actually start writing some real documentation in there. And then the next thing they're going to do is they're going to fix some little runtime uh, function that is a nice, easy little tweak of code. My first patch to PHP, um, I, sh- I should say, by the way, I did I did not go to school. Uh, well, not to college anyway. Um, I don't have any formal training in any language. Um, I've learned uh, C just kind of by jumping in and trying it out. My first patch to PHP with very little C experience was just to take the log function and give it a second parameter so you can get an, get logs in an arbitrary base. It was a really easy patch to do. It was a very tiny one. I sent it to the mailing list. They said, this is formatted wrong. Do it again. Oh, okay. And then I, I reformatted it. I sent it and they said, oh, this looks lovely. Thank you. 
here, would you like some karma to commit some more patches in the future? Like, that's, and that's how it literally all it takes to get involved in open source. Yeah. And if if you're sitting there and if you're thinking, gosh, I'd like to to work on some project, but I'm just not up to it. You're wrong. Just, just do it. Just do it. Yeah, we, uh, we, You're not going to get fired. I think the barriers are even lower now with the way that coding has become social with GitHub. I think back when, you know, in the karma oh, days, it might have been a little different and higher barriers. And now it's even lower barriers. Oh, GitHub has done wonderful things for just bringing everybody out of the word woodwork because you can find your project so fast. You can fork it with a single button press. Yep. You can make a little branch, publish it to your own version of it. You don't have to find some place to host your code. It's just right there next to the project. People can even discover your fork of it through the, 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 uh, the UI. It's fantastic. Love GitHub. Love GitHub. Well, Sarah, it definitely has been quite a blast having this chat with you. Thank you so much for taking the time you have taken to, to step away from what you do at 8 in the morning, your time. Um, to have this chat with us. I'm sorry for making you get up maybe a little bit earlier, or at least talking for this long and this excitedly about what you do at eight in the morning. It's just probably not your, maybe it's your normal. I don't know. But uh, no, I'm, I usually wake up about an hour and a half from now. Okay. So you, <laughs> she, she woke up earlier just to have the conversation. So um, we really appreciate you taking the time and just um, your passion for, you know, for open source for, and, and even, you know, your hero statement. There was like anybody who, commits to open source with a generous heart and, and just really wants to see it grow and not so much gain profit from it. And I really appreciate you sharing all the, all that you have shared today on the show and, you know, as best you can keep in touch with us, we'll do whatever we can to help, uh, you know, help mention whatever you do in, in the future. And maybe we can get uh, someone back on the show again. I like the, the conversation we had there at the end. So I'll, I'll ping you via email and see if we can't extend some conversations we had here today. But I do want to mention three of our sponsors, DigitalOcean, CodeShip, and TopTal for helping make this show possible. They are awesome. 5x5 is awesome. If you don't listen uh, to any other shows on 5x5, go to 5x5.tv right now and check some other shows out. The changelog's on there at slash changelog. We broadcast every week live. Myself, Jared, and awesome guests like Sarah. So at this time, everyone, let's, let's say goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.